Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square, and in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to create a sidebar for a blog post in your Squarespace 7.1 website. Before I share my screen and teach you exactly how to do this step by super simple step, I want to explain the concept. We want to create a sidebar that will automatically update anytime we need to change the content. This way you can use it to feature promotions or free events. This sidebar is actually going to be a summary block, a summary block inside that blog post in Squarespace. This summary will pull its content from a blog that we'll create in the not linked section of our site. We'll call this blog our sidebar, and in this blog, we'll add images, we're going to turn titles into buttons with a little bit of custom code, we'll style it so it looks like a unique sidebar when it's featured in a summary block inside blog posts on our public-facing blog. Now, don't worry if that sounds a little complicated because I'm here to show you just how simple it can be. I'll go ahead and share my screen and we'll set this up together. Let's get started. Here we are inside Squarespace. To create this simple sidebar, the first thing we need to do is to create a sidebar blog, a blog that holds the content for our sidebar. Inside this blog, we'll create multiple blog posts that serve for every link. Any thumbnails will be displayed as an image, any excerpt will be displayed as text, and any title will be displayed as a button thanks to some custom code. Let's go ahead and get started. Over on the left-hand side of my screen, I'll select Website, and in the Not Linked section of my site, I'm going to click this plus sign to select a blog. We want to create a brand new blog for our sidebar. It doesn't matter which layout you pick, so we'll start with that one, and I'll label it Sidebar. Now I'm going to click into this Blog Content option, and selecting these checkboxes here, I can quickly delete all this demo content. We don't need any of that. I'll select the delete option and there we go. Let's add our first post by clicking this plus sign. We don't actually need a title for this post. This is going to be an image. I'll select exit. I'll click these three dots and under the settings for this post, we're going to add our thumbnail. I have a sample image for a sale promotion that I'm doing right here on the asset library. So I'll add that. And then scrolling down here, this part is super important. Toggle on link post title to source URL. This works for thumbnails too. I'm going to toggle this on and the source URL will be the landing page for that sale. I'll just label it mywebsite.com forward slash sale, whatever page you want to direct people to when they click on this image, which will show up on our sidebar. That's going to be our source URL. Under options, select status and publish this blog post. We'll select save Squarespace will ask if we want to share that. We don't, so we can click done and we can add more content. The next thing I want to add is a link. So I'm going to click this plus sign and we're going to actually give this blog post a title. Remember, the blog post titles will be turned into button. This blog post title, I'll say explore store because we're offering a sale. I'm assuming this is a website for a store. We'll call it explore store and we'll select save and exit. Now I'll click on those three dots again for this specific blog post so I can access the settings. Under settings, we need to toggle on link post title to source URL and we'll label and we'll add the URL for our store wherever we want this button to link. Under the options tab, we need to go ahead and publish this post. We'll select save, we'll select done, and we have our first link in our sidebar for exploring the store. Let's add two more links. We'll click this plus sign. And for this blog post, let's go ahead and say... Instagram. Maybe you want to link to your Instagram account from your sidebar. We'll select save and exit. And again, we've got to click on those three dots to access the settings. Here in the settings, I want to make sure that this links to my Instagram account because that was the title of this button here. And one more time, make sure that you've selected link post title to source URL. Under options, we'll go ahead and turn this on to published. So it's live. We'll select save and done. And now we have an image at the bottom a link above it for exploring the store, and a link above it for Instagram. How about we add one more link for a contact page? I'll click this plus sign. We'll label this one contact me and select save and exit. Selecting these three dots under settings, I want to make sure this links to the contact page on my website, so I'll toggle on link post title to source URL. Under options, we'll publish this post. There we go. And I've got one more that I want to add, and that's a little blurb at the top of my sidebar about me, the author. We'll click this plus sign. We don't need to give it a title, so we'll just select exit, and I'll click on these three dots and access the settings. Here, I can select search for images or directly upload. I'll click on search for images and grab a picture of me from my asset library. There we go. 
Now scrolling down here, we have the excerpt. This is where I'm going to type the text that's going to display. And I'll add a little excerpt about myself that says, hey there, I'm Becca. I teach people how to creatively customize Squarespace. Now we don't need a source URL or a link. That's enough for me. Under options, we'll select status and publish this post. We'll select save. And now we're ready to add our sidebar to our blog post. We'll go ahead and navigate back to our website menu. And I'm going to click into our blog where we want this sidebar. We'll click into an article and select edit. And now I can select this plus sign and choose summary from our content block options. Again, I click the plus sign. Now we're adding a summary block. Our first option is to select a page and we just made one. We made sidebar. I'll click on this page and we'll go back under the design because there's one more setting here to pay attention to and that's primary metadata. I don't need the date posted. That has nothing to do with my sidebar. So I'm going to turn that off. So all we're going to see is the content that we just added the excerpt, the thumbnails, and the titles. All right, under design, it's currently set to wall. Leave it at wall, but increase the number of items to make sure all of your links show up. And scrolling down here, we have title, featured image, and excerpt. We want all three of those turned on. Now that we have those settings set, let's go ahead and move our sidebar to where it needs to be. I'm going to grab this summary block. I'm clicking down on my cursor. I'm pulling it all the way over to the right until I see this vertical blue line and then I'll let go. That moved my summary block all the way over to the edge of my content. Now I can drag it just a little bit further to change the size, maybe a little bit smaller. There we go. Now we have a sidebar. Now we have a simple sidebar on our blog. It has a picture of me with an intro. It has some options that are links. You'll see my cursor change, and it has an image that'll take people to my sale but there's space pretty far apart, so let's make a couple more changes before we get to step four and customize it with code. I'll double click on that summary block and under the design tab, I'll pull this over so we can see. What I want to do is select size and spacing and reduce this gutter width. Let's say we take this all the way down to maybe 20, a nice round number. There we go. Gutter width is the distance between the text and the images here on this sidebar. And I want to make sure they're a little bit closer together so they're easier to see. All right, now back here in the design tab, you've got other options too. If you want to give it a border, you can do that. You can give it a background color so it looks unique compared to the background of the blog post. I think it's fine just the way it is, so I'll go ahead and leave it there. All right, let's get to customizing with code. We'll go ahead and select exit, and I want you to navigate back to website, and underneath utilities, you'll see system pages and website tools. Click on Website Tools, and this is where we can add custom CSS. Again, all of these codes will be listed. All of the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but I want to teach you how to use them and customize them. I'll zoom in on my CSS right here, and we'll go ahead and scroll up a little bit so we can see the sidebar content. Let's change these into clickable buttons. You ready? The first thing I'm going to do is say article because I want to make sure that this only happens on a blog post just in case use a summary block somewhere else. The first piece of code we're going to use will change this contact me button. This is the second item in my summary. So I need to say summary item nth of type two and then we can say summary title and give it a unique background color. How about yellow? And there you have it. Now the contact me button has a yellow background. I'd like to center that text. I think that'll look a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and say text align center. There we go. And let's give it a little bit of padding. So we have a little bit of more. So we have more space between the edge of this fake button and the text. We'll say padding 10 PX. There we go. All right. Now it looks a lot more like a button. I'm going to go ahead and give it a border as well. How about border 2 PX solid orange. That is not how you spell orange. There we go. Solid orange. All right. We've got a good button there. Actually, let's reduce this padding down to five. That's a little bit too big. Okay. I like the look of that a lot better. Let's go ahead and make Instagram and Explore Store their own buttons as well. Again, start your code with article. So this only happens to a summary block in a blog post. This is the third summary item. So I'll say summary item nth of type three. There we go. And we'll say summary title because it's the title that we're changing here. 
Let's give it a background color of how about pink and we'll add some padding here as well. How about 5px and we'll go ahead and give it a border of 2px solid. How about red for this one? There we go. And I realized I forgot to do text align center. Let's go ahead and say text align center. Perfect. Now we have a clickable button for Instagram. We'll do this one more time for explore store. I want to start by saying article, then summary item, nth of type. This is the fourth item down. This is our first. This is our second. That's our third. Explore store is fourth. There we go. And we're going to be working with the summary title. Let's give this one a background of orange and we'll add some of that padding about 5px. We'll give it a border. How about 2px solid pink for this one? And let's not forget text align center. There we go. We now have three unique buttons in our fake sidebar. There's one last code that I want to add before we add the sidebar to an additional blog post so you can see just how easy it is to update this. And that would be a hover effect. I want these buttons to have a background color change on a hover so it's very obvious that they're clickable. In my custom code, we'll start this code with the word article. And these are all summary titles. So we can just say summary title hover. And now we'll change the background color. How about just a solid white color? We'll say exclamation point important. So the browser knows to change the color. That's an important code. And we'll go ahead and change the border color too. So we have a universal style for all of these titles. We'll make that a dark gray. Again, saying important. And now when we hover over these, they function like buttons. Isn't that awesome? Super customizable. Any color you see in these codes should be customized to match the color of your own website, be it a web safe color name like pink, red, or orange, or a hex color code like I have here in the hover effect. Make sure you also adjust the padding and the style of border so it suits the style for your own website. The most important part here is that we have article at the beginning, so this only happens to a summary on a blog, just in case you use a summary on another spot on your site. And then we've also specified the second item, the third item, and the fourth item. So we get these unique color changes for each one of those elements. All right, we've made a lot of changes today. Let's select save. Now that we have our summary sidebar perfectly customized with code, it's time to add it to our other existing blog post. I'm going to go back to website menu and we'll click into our blog. Let's grab another blog post from the list. Doesn't have a sidebar. We'll hop into edit mode. Click this plus sign. We'll grab a summary. Under select page, I want to grab sidebar. We'll go back. Now under the design menu, make sure you increase the number of items. And then we can click out. To, and then we can drag this over to the edge and reduce the width of it so it's much smaller. One more. There we go. And I realized we didn't turn off the metadata or change the spacing. Let's keep going. I'll double click on this here and we'll say no metadata, please. And under design, we want to scroll down to size and spacing and reduce that gutter width. I'll be sure to include a checklist with all of these steps in the description below, along with the CSS that we use to create these buttons. Now we'll save this blog post because we made those changes and we'll select exit. I'll show you one last time. We'll add it to the third blog post here. Hop into edit mode, click the plus sign and select summary, choose your sidebar blog, turn off your metadata, under design, make sure you increase the number of items, and under size and spacing, reduce that gutter width so it's the right size. Once you've made those changes, drag your summary over to the edge and reduce its width so it's a smaller summary. One more. There we go. And the custom code will be applied so these buttons will look like buttons and will be a super clickable, interactable sidebar in your Squarespace blog. Select save on every blog post you've added that to and you'll be good to go. We just covered a lot of content in this tutorial. So in the description below, you'll find a list of all the steps that we took together to create this sidebar in Squarespace. You'll also find those CSS codes that we used to make sure that those titles looked like clickable buttons, hover effects and all. Just make sure that you modify those codes so they match the unique style of your own Squarespace website when you're ready to use them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments and definitely check out some of my related videos linked below. I've got a lot more to teach you about all the cool things you can do with Squarespace. 
Thanks again for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.